on the next Inside California Education. So you can be the cameraman, the director, the teleprompter worker, or the anchor. Visit an immersive media program where students are learning video and editing skills starting as early as elementary school. On the count of three. One, two, two three. We'll see how underrepresented students are being encouraged to consider careers in engineering, math, and technical fields through a national program with chapters throughout California. So it's got to come out a little bit. Right there. Does that look pretty good? Yeah, it looks pretty good. And high schoolers in Stockton learn key construction skills culminating in a design-build competition against dozens of other schools. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Welcome to Inside California Education. I'm Jim Finnerty. Today's students have grown up using cell phone video cameras, but there is an art to turning that raw material into films or newscasts. Well, let's visit some schools that have created a pipeline for students interested in digital media that begins as early as elementary grades and continues all the way through high school. The day begins before dawn for Vernon Bishow's advanced media production students at Center High School in Sacramento County. We get here about 6.45, school actually starts at 7.40, 7.45, so we're here about an hour before everyone else is. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, Bishow. The students are here every morning, five days a week, to produce the school's daily yes. newscasts. So right here, keep going, back up, back up. Let's just take it from the top. My zero period class is the advanced class where I, there's a lot less lecture, where I'm not giving them an assignment that they all do together. The students are pretty much immersed in media. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. The newscast is created in Center High School's state-of-the-art TV studio, giving students the opportunity to experience a real-world television production environment. Your school, your stories, the news you can use. What we do every day is the news you can use. What it is, is it tells all of our students and teachers and parents what goes on around campus. Any, basically, news you can use. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. Cougar Connection starts now. Okay, let's stop. What's going on with all the cameras? That's camera one. Camera one. Okay, well that's right. It wasn't on one. It was on three the whole time. This isn't just another elective class. Students have to apply to be part of Center High's Media and Communications Academy, also known as MCA. From sophomore through senior year, students in the academy stay together and take core classes with the same teachers. You're building your story to, to that moment. We do all sorts of cross-curricular projects. So, for example, you might have a project about a historical event in history, and then you have to write an essay about it in English, and then you'll have to do a PowerPoint about it in Spanish. So it's all cross-curricular, and I love it. The Academy is part of a statewide model called the California Partnership Academies. It's one of 340 academies across the state, offering subjects as diverse as business technology, health sciences, engineering and design, and media. The Partnership Academy was an experiment to try to find innovative ways to teach students and reach at-risk students, keep them involved, and then get them into college, particularly as career focus. 
While Bishow technically produces the newscast, the students handle everything else, from directing to appearing on camera. Hello, Center High School. I'm Juliet. Here is the news you can use for Thursday, January 25th, 2018. Probably the most fun is being able to work with everybody in that advanced broadcast. We all work together pretty well. We do all of these crazy projects, and we get help from everybody. Everybody supports each other. It's it's really awesome to be able to work here. My number one job is just getting the students to care about what they're doing. And once they care, I just have to keep out of their way. All right, can we do that last sequence again? <laughs> and I'll stay out of the way. Make sure you guys are on the right camera this time. Center High's program became so popular, Bishow began looking for ways to expand it. About eight or nine years ago, I started doing workshops for elementary school students to, to, to find out what kind of interest elementary students had in video production. And they're crazy about it. They love it. I met with the gate teachers, the gifted and talented teachers at the elementary school, and asked them if they'd like to do after-school programs incorporating video. All he had to do was say that he wanted to do something with TV production, and I was so excited to be able to bring that back to kids here. Susan Erickson teaches the after-school media class at Oak Hill Elementary, just a couple of miles from Center High School. The district hopes to create a pipeline for K-12 students interested in media. There are four positions, A, B, C, and D, and I'm A. I did a How to Play Handball instructional video and a documentary on how sunscreen affects coral reefs. I'm working on something called CPR for Kids, which is like most people think that you have to be older, like a grown-up or older than 21 years old to do CPR, but it actually doesn't matter how old you have to be. These are fourth, fifth, and sixth graders who are coming up with these ideas. These students are from nine years old to 12 years old. And they're working in teams, sometimes multi-age as well. Whatever passion appeals to them, we let them roll with it. Right now, I'm actually working on one with three other people. We're doing a clay stop motion video on car pollution and how it affects us and the environment. Oh no, we're gonna move this way. Mentorship is a large part of MCA. Not only do students help each other, but several of Mr. Bishow's high school students travel to Oak Hill each week to mentor Mrs. Erickson's elementary students. Make sure you're talking to Calvin when you say, I'm working on it. So you say, not yet, but I am working on it. And you all so you have to go back to where it'll say, wait four seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. It's really cool when the high schools come here because they are kind of like pros and they get to help us. So it's pretty cool. I help them work on writing a script, figuring out all the types of shot angles that they want to get, and helping them go out and get those angles and all the shots and everything that they need. Help them with editing, publishing. I do the whole jig with them, and I love it. When they work with the, with the younger kids and help them teach, they become better, and, and they're more invested personally. So it's a win-win. The school's newscasts are at the heart of both media programs. At Oak Hill, the weekly program is called the Otter Outlook. Good morning, Otters. I hope you're having a marvelous Monday so far. I'm Kelly. And I'm Michael. Welcome to Our Otter Outlook is probably the most exciting thing that the kids get to do weekly because they're running a news show. And we have a news team that goes out and actually films in classrooms. All the teacher has to do is give us a call a day in advance, let us know about activities such as buddies working together, special art activity, science activity, our news crew is on it. Every week you're doing something else. So you can be the cameraman, the director, the teleprompter worker, or the anchor. The hands-on skills, the teamwork, and the close-knit community not only inspired the kids, but the teachers as well. Everything they come up with there has no boundaries to them. They don't see walls or stop signs in anything they do. And so that just makes you just excited to make sure whatever they come up with, it's going to happen for them. We're going to work real hard to get it done. It's amazing to be able to look back on and be like, wow, I really have come so far because of MCA. Joining MCA was one of the best choices I've ever made. That's it for the news. You can use it back to you, ladies. See you next time.
Career Academies first appeared in California public schools in 1984. Today, there are hundreds of California partnership academies, including a health sports medicine academy in the Bay Area, an oil technology academy in Kern County, and a teacher preparation academy in Los Angeles. Other academies focus on careers in solar energy, law enforcement, hospitality, and tourism. Next, we visit the East Bay, where students are taking part in an after-school program that encourages them to consider careers in engineering and science-related fields. The focus is on underrepresented students, with the goal of increasing the ranks of women and minorities in all kinds of technical professions. So basically, this blue rail here. You see that? So this ground has to go to that blue rail. And then the next one will be Echo. These students are engaging with engineers through a unique program called NSBE. NSBE is an acronym for the National Society of Black Engineers. It's an organization that's dedicated to it, uh, increasing the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the black community. And I wasn't exposed to STEM and what it could do for me until I was already in college. So. I really hope that you guys take these experiences and these sessions and really work with them and see if this is right for you, um, but learn something at least. These kids are engaging with technology and products of engineering continuously, every day. It directs our lives. Having these students have a, uh, a better understanding of what they're interacting with from an early age is going to help improve their academics and help them understand what's to come. Nesby was started in 1975 by six engineering students at Purdue University. There had been various groups of black engineering students all around the country that existed independently. They would bring all of these engineers together to create the National Society of Black Engineers. Today, Nesby now includes more than 500 chapters and nearly 16,000 active members in the U.S. and abroad. Nesby chapters include collegiate, professional, and pre-collegiate members, with 11 Nesby Junior chapters throughout California. What, what's the difference between speed and velocity? Uh, speed is like how fast you can go, you can velocity is speed in a given direction. And direction, right? I work with recruiting professionals in Silicon Valley, the East Bay Nesby Junior chapter. And what we do is we work with delivering STEM to these students from a second grade to 12th grade. Primarily, the program is all facilitated by what we call coaches, who are all professional engineers and are college engineering students. Show you kind of how it's easier if you... 363. Go back up. Nesby chapters hold programs throughout the school year, including weekends, over the summer, and after school. For this chapter, meeting at Pittsburgh High School, class starts bright and early Saturday morning. First law again. You have to take that rest, stays at rest. And I'm talking motion, stays in motion. Unless, in the same speed, in the same direction, unless acted upon by an imbalance force. Yeah! That's gonna be so excited about physics! I love it! Most of the classes that are taught here at Nesby, the kids are learning scientific inquiry, the engineering process, presentations. They're learning skills that are transferable to any career or, or any class that they have. So now both of you guys are going to work together and you're actually going to build this. This is the propulsion system we're working on right now. Nesby is not meant to replace what's happening in the classroom. Instead, it supplements what students are being taught. One, two, oh. There's certain um, uh, aspects of classroom learning that can be mundane to a student, particularly a student who's highly bright and highly active and may not want to pay attention all the time. Uh, but you take that same student and give them something to build or something to construct or something to, to enact, uh, that student then gets motivated. Nesby helps to stimulate and reinforce the opportunities that are in reach to students through the study of engineering, teaching students to think for themselves. My son 
is the light of my world, and I wanted him to be part of Nesby for multiple reasons. I wanted him to be part of an organization that esteemed education, that made it normal to be smart, and that made it fun to be smart and to be black. So our goal was to trust the game. Very little but to make it go higher. We can see, um, you know, athletes and entertainers and even doctors and lawyers on television and in media. We don't often see engineers, scientists, or STEM professionals depicted in, in any popular media. I think the programs like NSBE will be necessary uh, until we reach parity, until this underrepresentation is no longer a thing. And uh, when the numbers of African American and uh, African diaspora engineers uh, are at the same levels as the population, then we won't need to talk about this anymore. We've made a lot of progress, certainly, but we've got a long way to go. Who can tell me what the difference between average speed and instantaneous speed is? Kayla. Average speed is your speed over a whole length of time, and instantaneous speed is the speed at a certain moment. Yes, perfect. I see the successes. I see the kids graduating from college. I see the parents being proud of their children because they've succeeded in something. All right. The reward to me is now being able to be a product of Nesby, be a product of my community, and then also help out additional communities. Supporters say it's not realistic to expect that every student exposed to Nesby will become an engineer, but they say programs like these provide a foundation to build on for the future. I would tell parents to give your son or daughter a chance and let them be exposed to this. You may decide or they may decide that it's not for them, but uh, I'm a parent myself and I, my uh, philosophy has always been to expose my daughters to as much as possible and let them chart their own path after that. On the count of three, one, two, two. If you drive on roads or use electronic devices, you can thank an engineer. Engineers play key roles in creating all kinds of structures and products, from airports to bridges, from home appliances to farm machinery. Tens of thousands of engineering jobs are expected to open in the coming decade, with a median salary of $91,000 a year. And finally, let's visit a school where students are preparing for various careers in construction, engineering, drafting, or architecture. It's all part of an impressive career technical program that's giving young people the necessary skills to work on construction sites or enroll in two-year or four-year degree programs. Right now, construction is booming again. We've got a, an economic revival occurring, and um, the construction industry is dying for skilled labor. And so we tell our kids, hey, if you can show up on time, you can pass a drug test, you can work with your hands, you know how to read a tape measure, you know, there are people who are dying to put you to work. On this two-acre site at Lincoln High School in Stockton, you'll see teenagers engaged in just about every aspect of construction from computer-aided design to the actual building of structures. This group is practicing how to build a shed that they'll recreate at an upcoming construction competition. So that intersecting wall is going to come in here and it's going to join right along in here and this needs to extend over three and a half. David DeBacco is an instructor at the Engineering and Construction Academy at Lincoln High. Built in collaboration with nearly 100 industry partners, the academy prepares students for jobs right out of high school or a path to higher education. We focused on uh, four different career paths, um, the architecture, drafting, and engineering and design. Um, and a lot of those students are going to be students that are going to matriculate to four-year institutions. And we have uh, construction technology. It's all your flat work and rough framing. They'll go to work in the carpenters union. They're going to go to work in the laborers union. Um, some of them may not go union. Some of them may work for themselves or non-union shops. We have mechanical construction also. And we have uh, the woodworking and millwork program. It truly is a model program for not only the state but the country. And, and this is what we need to do in the high schools to provide our kids with great opportunities so they can be gainfully employed. And then get a short piece of pipe, and then you need a 90, okay? Academy yeah, founder Jeff Wright done. wanted to create real job opportunities for youth in Stockton, a city hit hard by the recession. Okay, good. 
Yeah, that looks good, guys. The Academy opened in 2010 with major funding from a California Career Technical Education Grant. I wish every kid could go to college, but the reality and the numbers bear it out. It's just not going to happen. There's $1.3 trillion in college debt right now, and there's more college debt than there is a credit card debt. And we need to focus on getting our kids a job. A lot of our kids start out in the $20, $22, $23 an hour range. So it's critical to the city of Stockton to provide those kinds of high paying wage jobs. It's a win win for everybody. Recent graduates of the program can attest to the high wages they're earning straight out of school. I'm 18 and I'm making $23.50. And in July, I get my $2 raise. And then for going to back to school, I get uh, an additional no raise. I can max out around $50, $60 an hour. I don't see it as a job, I see it as a career. I'm going to be doing this for a while. I think that the, the, the huge misnomer for construction is that it's low paying jobs. I mean, think about what's required to build, you know, say the Bay Bridge. From the architect to the engineer to the divers to everybody that's involved in that project, there's a lot of really skilled um, individuals with a lot of talent in there, and those are really high paying careers. I looked at a lot of high schools and so did my mom, and as soon as I found out this place had an engineering and construction academy, it was my dream to come here. Randolph plans to major in electrical engineering at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Everything he does here is geared toward his career plans, even making these birdhouses. This kind of gives me a chance to work with, work with my hands and kind of get my hands in what I really need to do. So though it's not the same thing, it kind of just gives me an idea of what I'm going to be doing in the future. Emily also has an eye on the future with plans to join the Iron Workers Union. Her experience at Lincoln has given her the confidence to enter a male-dominated field. I'm used to being the only girl and I'm kind of like more of like a tomboy, so like I kind of get along with the guys and they're really nice to me and so like I really like it here. We firmly believe that women and girls should have the same opportunities as the guys and if they can go out and do the job they should get the same pay as the guys. Teachers recognize not all 500 students taking classes in the academy will go on to work in construction or engineering fields, but many do learn valuable life lessons. When I first came here, I've never used a nail, like, because my family was just like, oh, you know, just, it's fine, just leave it. But then coming here, I learned how to use a drill. I learned how to use, like, um, screws and all that. We get to use tools like skill saws, hammers, we get to nail things, like it's different from woodshop because woodshop we just like get to cut things and that's it. Here we get to build things, like we got to build a shed and everything. Alberto is part of the Lincoln High team that's competing in the 32nd annual design build competition put on by the Sacramento Regional Builders Exchange. The event draws more than 300 high school students who get just two days to build a structure of their choice, such as a gazebo, a shed, or a tiny house. On the second day of competition, Alberto is feeling positive about Lincoln High's progress. So yesterday, we, we pretty much started from scratch, built the floor, built all the walls, we started putting rafters on. Today, we pretty much finished off the roof, put trim on, put shingles on the roof, ridge caps. It's a small house, so it has like two windows and a door. It's, it's different, like it's different compared to everyone else that's here. We've got several schools that are, that are building tiny houses. The program that the kids are building for this time around, the tiny houses actually go to provide housing for homeless veterans. All the materials are donated for the building of their structures, and then they get to keep the structures afterwards. And in some cases, some schools have already pre-sold the sheds to existing buyers. Some of them will go back and will auction them off. Some of the sheds are donated for other programs. We have uh, one school that's building some storage sheds that will be going to the Folsom Zoo. But the nice thing is, if the schools do take it and auction it off or get money from the selling of the sheds, those monies go back to buying materials that they use in their shop programs throughout the course of the year. As the students work, judges make the rounds to score each structure. There are 23 schools represented at the competition, and organizers hope that students from at least a few of those schools will walk away with new career ideas. For every five journeymen that retire, there's only one apprentice entering into the trades, and so we're really getting to the point where it's going to be a critical situation. It's really a wonderful middle-class career that is available to kids who don't go on to college. Construction is a hard job. It's energy consuming. You're really tired at the end of the day. I think I could do it. Like if I really wanted to be a carpenter, like I think I could pull it off. Yeah, and then I get to see what I do. It's not like me writing something or like reading something. It's like I did this with my hands and boom, it's there. All of the students here have something tangible they can be proud of. 
but especially Lincoln High, which was awarded Best of Show at the end of the competition. That's it for this edition of Inside California Education. Now, if you'd like more information about the program, just log onto our website. We're at insidecaled.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. Cougar Connection starts now. You see that? So this ground has to go to that blue rail, and then the next one will be Echo, right? Very little, make it go higher. Yeah, you need a male adapter there. You have a male adapter. And then get a short piece of pipe, and then you need a 90, okay? Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. So, Greg, it's a lot to take in. And I know that's hard to hear, but the doctors caught it early. Hi, Blake. My dad has cancer. And I know how hard that is to hear, but you're in the right place. And Dr. Pascal and her team, they know what to do. They know what to do. The doctors know what to do. So here's the plan. First off, we're gonna give you all this The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.